I was always the one that wanted to stay home. I didn't really want to go out on the town. I'd rather stay home and paint. <laughs> I began to draw when I was very, very young. And I can remember asking Dad to draw me a house and then copying it. And he didn't ever draw the usual um, stick figure house. or It was his house that he was going to build. <laughs> and then I remember drawing a deer in grade two, and everybody thought that was wonderful. It wasn't really, but... <laughs> and then, as I said, in grade five, I was identified by the, through the school system to um, get free lessons at, at the Edmonton Art Gallery. And um, I went every Saturday morning then. And then when I went to high school, I went to evening classes and paid for them. Um, and we had some of the very best artists in Edmonton teaching those classes. One of them thought, I don't think she thought I was destined to be a fine artist and make my living that way, but she was the one that sent me to the University of Manitoba course as in interior design. And um, another one had a daughter who was taking ballet and so I, of course, wanted to go to every ballet. I dragged my mother to every ballet company that came to Edmonton. And it became a real love of my life. Tell me about the purple. I don't know. I didn't used to be think that purple was my favorite color. It was always pink, which I still have quite a bit around. But um, when I discovered dioxazine purple, it, it just opened up so many possibilities for me. And I found myself putting a little bit of purple in everything, and then soon, I guess, some of the purple was taking over. <laughs> and and it's, it's just become really a joke. And I do try to paint without it, but it's never as good. I was quite involved with the art gallery for, well, three years I was a director, and I was um, pretty much choosing the shows, and. Um, hanging the shows, which I love doing. But um, the busy period at the gallery and the busy period for the Strata Council, which I'm also part of, um, was the same. And when my health wasn't too good, I had to give up the gallery. But I still have a great soft spot for the gallery. And I sponsor at least two shows a year. And I still participate in any of the uh, group shows. I, d I had some work, maybe still have some work, in the, um, in the Art from the Heart show. I had four tiny uh, little abstracts, or bright red and orange, and um, a couple of small painted over paintings. <laughs> I have every cupboard in my house filled with, ca with canvases. I've sold quite a few, but you don't sell them like hotcakes here in Quenelle. When the breeze was open, we all used to sell much more. But um, I haven't room for any more, so I have to paint over them. But no, there's lots of things that you don't really need to keep for posterity. So, But I've lost some good paintings over the years. And people who do buy my painting and bring it back for just something to be touched up, they know better than to leave it with me because they won't get the same painting back. <laughs> and that's why I'll never give up acrylics because they're, they're so good for painting over and building up texture. And my paintings is known now for, for heavy texture and um, pretty loose style, you can see. That's been painted a couple of times. And the foreground is not the foreground that I was originally there. The color pink is not, a, orig, originally it was a blue sky. And lots of the little trees on the other bank are, are new. I, I come back to landscapes all the time, but I do very much enjoy painting the figure. I, I think the most fun I ever had was painting the series of, of what I call tree spirits. And I think it started because I had ordered some canvases from Edmonton and three of them were damaged in transit. They had a slit right through the canvas. So I patched that 
with a piece of cotton on the back. And so I conceived this series of, of forest spirits. So each one had a, a tree trunk, a figure of a woman, and at least one bird. And uh, you can see that the, the bark on the tree became the, was the handmade paper. And um, I cut the figures freehand out of cotton cloth and built them up that way. And then painted on top of them. They were shown in the, in the Breeze uh, Golden Gallery. Only Stan was brave enough to, to show 10 newts. <laughs> Um, he had a jewelry store, and at some point he decided to make it a gallery for all the artists in Quesnel for several years, more than five years, I think, before it closed, because it was downtown. And um, our gallery is lovely, but it's not, there's not a lot of walk-in traffic. And now with COVID and none of the openings happening, I think they're struggling for support right now. I think when the federal government moved all their offices out of Quesnel, they lost a lot of um, volunteers, a lot of really well-paid jobs, and that would be buying art, be supporting the arts community. I don't think it's ever been the same. You know, they were, all went to William Slate. I always have uh, small landscapes with trees in the gallery in, in um, Williams Lake. If it's got a tree in it, they can sell my, <laughs> my painting. <laughs> paint what you love. If you love trees, paint trees. And paint and paint and paint and paint. And paint over them because everything you paint is not going to be a masterpiece. And that's one of the hardest things to learn as an artist. And, and that's quite freeing for people that are learning to paint. Of course, they, the first couple, they couldn't imagine painting over. But if they can realize that everything doesn't have to be perfect, try again. It works much better. <laughs> I've done an awful lot of that, haven't I, Molly? <laughs> yes, and the more I paint, the faster I paint. And if I start to paint anything and I paint two or three things and by the fourth one, it's much better than the first and much looser usually. Putting a great lump of paint on your, on your palette and getting a big brush and stirring it around and just going. <laughs> But I probably went, for, like everybody does, from stiff landscapes to something freer and then keep going. My favorite piece in here, this one right now, that's fairly recent. That was painted over something from a previous show that I didn't like, and it just painted itself. I've said that it's a little harder for me to get started these days. I, I think I'd like to work more towards the abstract for a while and see. And I, those are the little things I'm trying out now on things I've painted over. I, I do have a website as well. If you, My series are on my website. I did a series called my Seated Series, and it was all different stages of women's lives. The names of all of them started with an S. And I did siblings and spouses and sisters. One, one woman has a snake around her neck and the other one has a bird in her hand that she's looking at. Serenity and, oh, I must go and look at the word. I, I even have the words in my, those paintings. And I do use birds in my paintings that, for different meanings. Lots of us seem to be taken with birds in the caribou because there's so many. But I will always identify as an artist. I will be an artist until I die, a painter.